Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Sports Hub Central. I am your host, Chad M. And I'm Emily Nerland, and we are here to talk about the Lake Show. They made some big news in the offseason with some acquisitions. They are making even bigger news with how much they have been stinking as the season kicked off. So, what are the Lakers to do to turn this ship around before it gets too far into the season that they can't do anything? Well, first of all, they're one and four right now. And yes, there's some panic that should happen, but they can't be a complete overreaction because we know there's an 82-game regular season. We all know that the regular season in the NBA is the most insignificant out of all the major sports because of the fact that they're going to make the playoffs no matter what, and seedings really mean absolutely nothing at the end of the day. So as long as they figure it out heading into the playoffs, that's all that matters. The bigger question is, will they figure it out going into the playoffs in four or five months from now? Well, everybody was talking about, I think it was almost one-to-one odds that it would be the Heat versus the Lakers. So if there's anything that sports pundits do best, it is freak out about it. And everybody's freaking out about it. And my biggest freak out is the health of this Lakers team. So they're resting, guys. But at what point, when Steve Nash, he is that veteran guy, they can come in at any point and run this offense. But until that point hits, should they be trying to have a point guard go out there and run this Princeton offense, or should they have to overhaul everything? He's going to be able to come in and do whatever it takes and be the team well, player and take them to that you, next level. You make a great point, Emily, and the biggest issue is because Steve Nash is supposed to be the general on the floor that keeps the cohesion with the offensive unit, making sure that everybody gets their touches so they don't bitch and complain and say they're not you know, getting enough shots. With him being out, it just pretty much stalls all of that Progress and now they're forced to use, either use Steve Blake at the top of the key, or if not, he's running over and telling LA Gear's son Steven Jackson to go fuck himself. <laughs> and if that doesn't work out, then Which they have to use Kobe for. Bryant. He apologized. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. But that's Steven Jackson. Kid, he's a bit of a punk. I mean, come on, the guy's got ten there's... times more money than Steve Blake will ever <laughs> make in the NBA, and he's done nothing to earn it. But anyways, back to the Lakers here. Um, Yeah, so the problem is they're never going to get that offense uh, into cohesion. Dwight Howard's back still isn't fully healthy. They are an aging roster. Even when Nash comes back, he never has played a full season in the last six or seven years. Kobe and Howard are going to be in and out of the lineup. Same thing with Ron Artest. Gasol's Shouldn't a little they bit figure soft. out an offense then that will work when these guys are coming in and out? Is this offense the right one that no, they can have? No, it's not. They it's, need it's to change that. That's to what's going to be. And they have to wait until Nash is there until they get a full assessment on things. And personally, I think Mike Brown has to go. This guy's an atrocious head coach. And even if you go back to his days in Cleveland, they got away with it in the regular season because it doesn't mean as much, like I said. But when it came to the playoffs, he got thoroughly outcoached in multiple series against guys like Doc Rivers and Stan Van Gundy and uh, Thibodeau and all those good coaches in the They're Eastern great Conference. They're great coaches, And he too. relies too much on the stars and says, here, just mm-hmm. go. He put the balls in LeBron's hand and said, you create the offense. He's doing the same thing here instead of running proper structured offense. Which is interesting to me because if there is any argument you can make about the NBA is that everybody says they could go out there and coach any team so long as you have the talent. He's made a case that he can mess up some of the best talent in the world. Something else that happened this week, if you're anywhere in the world, you would know it. There was a little bit of an election happening somewhere, maybe in the USA. A few ballot key points that were passed in Washington and in Colorado that the sale of weed has now been legalized. Now, the NCAA, the NFL, all professional sports franchises say these are still banned substances on their list. Do you think this is okay? Should those teams that play in those regions be allowed to have weed in their system? Yes, absolutely. The bottom line is if it's legal within society, why should these sporting uh, leagues think that they're greater than the law and be able but to say no to... But only in specific too- regions. So are they, can they only test positive when they are at home games and when they leave they have to have it clear out of their system because it's illegal when they're out of their own state lines? Well, they use the same laws with everything else in society, so why would it change here? For example, like if you get caught with a gun in New York like Plaxico Burris did, and his license was from Florida originally, his punishment would have been different if he had that happen in Florida. So why are those laws applied to these athletes and their punishment but not marijuana? Because those are legal institutions that everybody is abiding by, whereas you as a citizen don't have to abide by what the NCAA or professional NFL. They're run as a separate system, and they have their own standards, and they have to abide by those, and they they They, have to have the same 
Uh, there's standards. their own rules, no yeah. doubt about it. And at the end of the day, no one's forcing you to play within their league. If you don't like it, leave yeah. it if you want to go smoke weed. But my biggest issue here is from more of a moral standpoint, not a regimented, this is on the dotted line and the contract you sign is, if alcohol is considered legal and there's nothing preventing them from drinking and marijuana is now starting to transfer the view of it from society's perspective and a legal perspective that it's considered casual like that, why can't it be treated the same way? Maybe it will be at some some point, but it has to pass everywhere before that can happen. I think it makes sense that they came out and, and made the statement that they're going to keep the same standard across the leagues because that makes sense and they can approach that from a league standpoint when the time comes when they feel it's Now necessary. let me finish it with this, Emily. I have one question and I know it might sound a little bit comical, but in all honesty, out of all the drugs and the performance enhancing things that people can use to make themselves better athletes, can someone please explain to me how marijuana is going to do that unless Joey Chestnuts is using it prior to the hot dog eating contest? I, I don't know. Exactly my point. So if it doesn't actually make them better on their field to get the advantage that all these PDs are supposed to do, who cares anyways? They still care, so it's... <laughs> That's a wrap for this week's episode of Sports Hub Central. We'll see you guys back here next week. And don't forget as well... Besides all these outstanding stories that are going on in the sports world, you still have an opportunity to bet on these games, which is fantastic. You see the link below, bethub.com. If you already have an account, great. If you don't, make sure to sign up. Cash in on some of the bonuses we have going on right now. Create your own betting lines, challenges your friends, and get involved. And make sure that when you're watching sports games that you have more entertainment value when you have a little bit of extra cash riding on the outcome.